All right, bro. What's going on, man? What's going on? No, I'm just chilling right now. All right, all right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, all right. Now let me ask you something. Are, are you talking through your phone or are you talking through on a headset? Because if you're talking through on a headset, I'm on the phone. phone. All right, cool, man. Bars, everything. Yeah, I love my headset and uh, I love my headset in my truck. Oh, okay, okay. See that you know a lot of. <laughs> uh, it's good to hear you say that because a lot of drivers they love to take their headsets and just wear it all over. And I'm like, dude, you 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 chilling, you you cooling. Why why do you got the trucker's yeah. headset on? Oh man, I'm just comfortable. Man, I don't like using it. <laughs> I don't like using it. That's why I, sometimes I forget. I only use it when I'm in the truck, you know, because you know we can't use our phone, so okay, you know, we can't hold our phone and stuff, you know. Yeah, that's that's what's up, man. I I usually like now. I I, I don't even use my phone like at all, you know, while I'm driving the truck. Yeah, I I don't uh I I get, you know, I I I I get a phone call. You know, I, I look I, I look to see who's calling and then, you know, when I pull over or, you know, pull over to get something to eat or go to the restroom or whatever, then I'll call them back. They'll get mad at me too. They be like, Yo, man, I just called you up. Why why you ain't answering the phone right then and there? Dude, I'm driving. I'm you know, I'm not trying. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, even with the head even with the headset, because I, I, I did have the headset, you know, I had the blue parrot and it, still with that, you know, to me, you know, before, you know, like like now, it's like a revelation for me now. But back then, it I, I didn't see no big deal out of it because, you know, everybody had it. You know, I would talk on the phone, yada, yada, yada. I thought I was being focused. But, you know, after the revelation I had, you know, it was like, OK, I, I don't want to talk to nobody, period. I don't want to be distracted. You know, my focus is on the road. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the blue parrot, I don't even, you know, I still have it, but I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, getting another, uh, another headset just, just to have, you know, I'm thinking about getting that clear drive. What, what do you think about that? You, you check that out? No, I didn't know. I just got a blue parrot. I just, uh, I only turn my headset on when I'm in the truck because, mm -hmm. you know, I deliver gas. So I de deliver gasoline. Ooh. So, okay. you know, the job, they, they, they call me, you know, they call me, you know, for the next load. But me and this company where I'm with now, it's just, we, this is a disagreement now. Um, it before, you know, the COVID 19 hit, mm -hmm. hit us hard. Now they had complaining with my pay because. All right, we, well, wait, 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 wait. We, we we don't have to get too much far. We don't have to get too far into that. We 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 don't get too far into that. Let me let me go ahead and uh let me go ahead and get the show started, and then we could talk about uh what's going on with you. Hold on. Let's go. What's going on, guys? Locked out men back, back again with another interview for you guys. I hope you guys like these interviews, man, because I, I really like bringing them to you guys. You know, I, I like finding people, interesting people, influential people, people that just want to come on and, and, and just, you know, talk about their experiences in, in the trucking industry. So, with that said, let me go in and uh, bring myself on in right here. What's up? Y'all Y'all see me? Y'all see me right here? I appreciate you guys seeing me right here. I am Locked Out Men, and welcome to the Locked Out Men podcast show. You know, I keep switching it up, but you guys know it's Locked Out Men podcast. So, on today's episode, man, a uh, young man from uh, Facebook, you know, we, we're, in a, we're in a Facebook group. Uh, there was a topic that was going on in the Facebook group. He came in and, and uh, said, something about, uh, said something about the topic that I thought it was interesting. Um, I, I was kind of curious about it, you know, and me and him started talking in the messenger. And uh, now he's here. He is here. 
I would like to bring to the show Mr. Darnell Barnes. <laughs> or Bonds. Yeah, Bonds. Bonds. Yes, sir. Yeah, as in Barry as Bonds. in Barry Bonds. You any relations to uh Barry Bonds, man? Any relations to the baseball nah, player? No. Nah. Cause you know, you know Barry Bonds is is one of the uh home one ch- I mean home run champions, right? You know that, right? Yeah, I've I been asking like that ever since I was in middle school. Okay, okay, that's uh-huh. that's what's up, but no relations to him, huh? Damn it, man. No, nah, couldn't, couldn't it'd be nice though. I I know it would it. You know that baseball, that m that uh that MLB money. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice. Oh man, oh man. So where where you at right now, bro? Where where you at? Oh, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, you in Indiana? Is that is you you born and raised from uh Indianapolis, or you or you moved up there? No, I was born and raised in Elkhart, Indiana. Oh, okay, okay. So you uh, so so yeah. you from so you from Indiana? Yeah, I'm from Indiana. I just moved to Indianapolis in 2006. Okay, okay. So what was it? What was it like coming up in Indiana, man? As a young man, what what, what was it like for you back then? Uh, it was good, you know, it was good in the 90s. Everybody knew your family, your mom and your dad. It was like a real community. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was, you know, fortunately to, you know, live in a good time growing up at Elkhart. You know, it was a small town it was outside of South Bend. You know, Notre Dame is real big up there. You know, a lot of Chicago Bears fans. Mm-hmm. But it was real nice, you know. Everybody knew everybody. You could walk around. You know, you can walk around and talk to each other. Everybody know your mom and dad, so you know you couldn't get really in trouble and stuff like that. Oh, uh, you you from a neighbor? You you from a neighborhood? Like if your if your butt get in if your butt get in trouble, your parents don't mind the other people whooping that ass, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's the time I grew up in. You know, a lot of stuff has changed. Uh, okay, yeah, of course, you know, technology, uh, you know, things, you know, things just, you, you're right, things is not the same the way it was before, man. All right, so let my listeners and the viewers know who I'm talking to, man. Tell, tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, I started driving trucks, I believe, in, I believe about five years ago, five or six years ago, I started driving trucks. I started with CR England. Um, I got I got fired my rookie year with CR England. I just banned the DOT bumper when it was locked to the dot plate. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, you know, you know when you pull from the dot plate, so they couldn't. The safety manager couldn't, you know, tell, you know, that it was me at the time or it was somebody did it with the trailer, you know. Mm-hmm. So they let me go on that. So CR, so so, so CR um, England was CR England was your first, uh, was your first, was your first stint in trucking. Yes, that's where I got my CEOs through them. Okay, so yo, so how how was it? How was it that you came across? Uh, how how was it that you came across CR England to 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 get your license? I mean, what? You know what? What was it about them that intrigued you to go uh, to get your CDLs through them? Uh, the training, um, the training, because I went through Swift. You know, you know, I went through a lot. Of, you know, this is before I even did my research. You know, when I was like, I believe I was twenty one at the time. Before well, I got my CDLs, before before they got suspended for a whole year, so I had to do all everything over again. Mm-hmm. Um, but. When I had to uh, go, when I was doing my research, I just typed in, you know, free training, you know, because there's trucking schools, you know, they, they charge you like $6,000 or yeah. $7,000 for yeah. training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to, so I just, CR England gave me the opportunity. I went to CR England uh, in Barnes Arbor outside of Gary, Indiana to learn how to drive trucks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, they teach us how to drive trust in a stick, you know, manual at the time before everything switched over to automatic. Then uh, it was a quick learn. I, you know, I did it like in 12 days because I went around Christmas time, mm-hmm. you know, when we had it, you know, you know, we bought Chicago at the time. So it was like a negative 22 outside. Right. You know, learn how to drive trust. And, you know, I, I pair 
pair of the truck good. You know, I it took me two two times to pass that test because, you know, when you do the, I don't know, when you took your test, your road test, the state test, uh, when I took the state test, I messed up in the box. So I had to do it again. Uh, but I passed everything. But so then I, yeah. in six months, I came a trainer. You know, you know, uh, you said that you, you said you, you, you trained and, and got your license during the winter, the winter time. So you know the winters yeah. the the winters up here in the Midwest man is is atrocious. I mean it's I mean it's brutal. it is brutal. But but it is the best time to learn how to drive a truck though. You know what I'm saying? I mean uh, I mean yeah. I mean now some people would agree would agree to disagree with that, but I learned I I um I, I drove during the winter time and uh I trained during the winter time. So that's when I got, you know, I got my license in December. I think it was uh the first week of December. Um I went to, you know, I went to Tri C Trucking Academy. So I, I went to a school instead of going to going through a company. I, I felt going through a school for yeah. uh, you know, I, I felt going through a school for me was was best for me. So, you know, by you doing what you did, you did what was best for you. So, but in my opinion, I, I really think, you know, driving in the wintertime because you you'll get you'll get to experience uh the 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 changing weathers, you know, driving on snow, driving in in yeah. heavy rain, driving in the wind, driving in whiteout conditions, driving on ice, uh, driving yeah. on ice exactly, and that gives you, you know, it, it it gives you a confidence booster as well. You know what I'm saying? It builds your it builds your confidence when you you you're able to drive in incumbent weather, man, and and you're able to conquer that. You know what I'm saying? Instead of driving yeah. in instead of driving in the springtime or in the summertime or in the fall, you know what I'm saying? Because your 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 confidence, you know, driving in the I mean in the in the spring summer and a little bit of the fall, you know, it's like okay, but then when that first you when that first snow hits, it's like everybody lose their minds. They they don't know what to do. But for people that trained and and gotten their license within the winter time you 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 know what to do you know what i'm saying so cr england um you 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 went through cr england how how many people uh was in your class uh when you started with uh cr england how, uh you started with about i want to say 80 people in the class and it went down to 15. Uh, it went down to 15 quick because, you know, that first week, they just leaving everybody out. Mm -hmm. um, some people did give up, you know, and, um, and uh, you know, the on, on the road testing and stuff. Um, some people just went to other companies at the time. Uh, Cause they didn't want to sign that contract at the time. Now what? You know, was a now that's that, contract. that controversial contract right there. What was uh? Now you had to go to you went through CR England, and in order to go through their program, you you literally had to sign a a contract with them saying that you had to drive for them for what uh, a year, ten months, uh, nine for, months. Oh, nine months. It was it was nine months at the time. I heard it's twelve months now. Um, it was nine months in the Zest. It was six months for them. Uh, I didn't. I didn't mind the. Uh, I didn't mind the contract because people were like you need to stay with a company to build experience. You know, it might not be something you want right now, but you want to build experience. You know, that's why I tell a lot of new drivers too: just stay with a company for now because you keep jumping from company to company. You know, it, all companies you might. It's always going to be a disagreement with something, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but when I signed a contract, it was like if you drive uh, 1.5 miles, the, the contract go in effect. Okay. So 
you know, you, you know, you didn't have to stay with them, but you know, people don't read the fine print. Got to read. Got to read the fine print. Yeah, we had a person that studied law at you know in our class. You know, he was going to school to be a lawyer, and he he was telling us in our group it was a blood deal in our group. He was telling us like, hey, bro, this is this how that this contract is. He like it's not really a bad contract. It's just like he was like. You know, then we like we just started talking to each other like, hey man, we just might as well just stay and get our experience on. You know, a year go past fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, just look at look you know, look where I'm, we at look where we at now, man. We we five months in in twenty twenty. I mean, next month yeah. next month is June. We we and after June it just it just go go just like that. Goes the old goes just man, like that, man. man. So the first year is the first year of your rookie year, man. You should just, you know, I, I understand a lot of a lot of guys get into this industry for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? Money. They want to they they want to make that bag. They want to make that six figures right yeah. off the rip. But in in your first year, you're not going to get that. You're not going to do it. You know nah. what I'm saying? You 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 should just be better off concentrating on getting your experience as much experience as you can. So with with that and be safe and and be safe. Uh, with that said, um, with that said, you're you uh you 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 got all your endorsements now. When you test out, uh, did you did you test out in the manual with them or did you test out? In a in a in an automatic. No, I uh, test out the manual. Uh, but was, was that was that by choice? You no, know, when I was. No, that wasn't by choice. You know, CR England at the time they had automatic trucks, but that was like when you get with your trainer, they had automatic trucks. That was just uh, we was the last class. We was the last class to test out the manual then it will switch it to all the matted trucks okay now it's good that you because that you one of the instructors uh, i said it was good that you that you tested out in uh in a manual because if you test it out in a in an automatic you'll be restricted yeah it was a slim chance of jobs too you know a lot of a lot of companies are switching to all the matters but they're doing it slowly you know, I like automatics, and sometimes I like driving sticks. It gives me something to do. You know, it keeps you alert when you drive a stick. You know, mm -hmm. you know, because when you're in an automatic, you you know, sometimes forget. You know, to do certain stuff when you go up the mountains and stuff. But when you're in a stick, the manual is like they give me a, like a, more control of the truck. But I like all the mags and traffic, you know. But we haven't had, you know, the last, this whole two months, you know, since we've been in lockdown, we haven't really had a lot of traffic, you know, since the country been closed. We haven't had a lot of people on the road, you know. It haven't been really no traffic. I could make it to here in 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, rather than take an hour to make it somewhere. So, you know, that's only the bright side of this, you know, virus is, uh, Thing. So, so you, uh, you know, even when I was with, with Celadon, I had a choice with Celadon. You know, oh, okay, I had sweet. a choice with Celadon. Okay, we switch over to Celadon. Yeah. We still in uh, we we still at CR England, bro. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but how how long uh how, how long did you uh how long did you stay with CR England? I say with CR England, it was almost a year with them. Uh, oh, okay, so you was, did fulfill your obligation was, to them. I was a week. Yeah, yeah I stayed with them for a week because I didn't, you know, I, I was a trainer, then I went local. Wait, was then, CR was CR England? Yeah, six months you could be a trainer. Okay, what was your or so so with uh. Well, six months. So, was six months in, man, and and you you uh, decided to go, uh, decided to start training some new jazz out here. What was your what was your experience? What was the good and bad, good and the bad and the uh, ugly with uh, training people over at uh, CR England? Uh, training is like it's not, man. You gotta have you gotta be built. You, your nerves gotta be built still to be training. You know, I understand they new drivers. They was new drivers like me, 
uh, at the time. And my first student, he was an older white cat. And, uh, you know, I'm young, so mm-hmm. it, it was already like, you know, we was already bumping heads, like, because I don't think he liked, I think he felt that I was telling him orders rather than trying to school him, train him on something, coach him. Mm-hmm. I was coaching him. I'm going to order him to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just, I don't, I didn't understand, like, sometimes I had to laugh when he, asked me stuff because I didn't understand why he got into it. Me and him got into it several times. You know, when you're in a truck with somebody for three weeks, you know, you gonna end up bumping heads anyway, right. you know? Right. Uh, he was my first student. So when he, uh, the first incident we had, uh, it was uh, the second week in the truck. He asked, no, it was the third day in the truck. He asked me, why do I make him drive? So much, right? So he can get you his know, uh, get, so he can get his time in. He has to drive, right? Yeah, you know, trainers like people, the students they get paid by hourly where the state they is from. They get paid minimum wage where the state they is from, right? Okay. So he was from uh, North Dakota at the time. It was North. No, it was Idaho, Iowa, Idaho, Iowa. It was one of them. And he, uh, he, uh, he kept complaining. I'm like, dude, uh, he didn't want to watch his mirrors. He used to cut people off. We in LA. He want to cut other drivers off. I don't know if you ever drove in LA. Yeah, I drove in LA. It's you know, it's a like, bitch. You drove in California. It's a different monster. Yeah, in California. I'm yeah, like, it's it's a it's a different it's a different beast in California when you when when you drive it. Yeah, it's you know, different you, out there. Now you have to. It's it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that you have to make your way over. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I I don't like I, I don't like getting cut off or anything like that, but if 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 a car is not letting you over, you're gonna have to make your way over safely. Um, but this yeah. but this but this uh so this is your this is your first uh your first trainee. So I, I'm a, yeah, I'm assuming I'm assuming that that didn't last too long. So how how long did how long did he last with you on the truck until you got the until you oh, got he your. Lasts, uh, uh, he- he he lasted the whole 180 hours. He did. He ended up doing 150. Cause I told him, I told him, I call RDM. I'm like, man, he should be with a new person. Mm-hmm. Then another event. This was one of the, the events that I didn't understand that took place. Mm-hmm. This is this is what really pissed me off. I was about to just quit training right there. I was, we was in Arizona outside of uh, new. We was we was in Arizona. And we went. We stopped at the Loves. That's where we filled up. We stopped at the Loves, and I took the paper in to do the. I, I used to take pictures of the bill lady, and mm-hmm. I used to use the trans thing at Loves, and I do it on the app and stuff. So I did it twice. So I made sure they got it, you know. And so he see me. I see him. We in a we you know getting our drinks. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm like, hey, I gotta go to the bathroom. So when I came out. Him and my truck was gone. They gave me a brand new truck. It was, it was 2018. They gave me a 2019 brand new Ford Cas, uh, Freightliner Cascade, mm-hmm. brand new. You know, you say AP brand, you say unit. you say brand new out of the box, huh? Yeah, brand new. Uh, only had like 2,000 miles on it. Uh, smell brand new. Still the plastic was on the seat. Mm-hmm. And the floor is a brand new truck. So, so what happened? I park it. I, I park it. I came out. He was gone. I left my cell phone in the truck at this time because I usually leave my cell phone in the truck when I go to the bathroom. Never do that. So, no, bro. Yeah. Nev- so never, I, I never, never, never leave your cell phone. Yo, the, the, the three main components that you never leave without and never leave in your truck while you're gone your keys, your cell phone. And your wallet, you know what I'm saying? Never, never. I, yeah, I, I, I learned. I, 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 I am for certain to make sure that I have my keys, my wallet, and my cell phone on me at all times, man. Don't never leave your never leave your cell phone uh, in the, in the, in the truck, especially leaving it with 
in the truck with somebody else that you don't know either. But all right, go ahead, continue. Hello. Yeah. Oh. So I came out. I came out. He was. Uh, he was gone. Uh, it was a state trooper at the time. Wait, wait, said, wait, hey, wait, wait. What do you mean gone? Like what? He he took the truck. He took off. He took the truck gone, or he he left gone. Yes, he took the truck. No, he took the truck. The truck and him was gone because I parked next to the dude. I like, uh, can I use your phone to call? So I called my phone. I didn't know his number by heart. Uh huh. So I went inside. I went inside at Subway. It was a state trooper in there at the time. No, it was a border patrol uh, police officer at the time. Then a state trooper came in, and they started questioning me. And I was like, I think my student, you know, took off and left me. They report as a stolen vehicle. Yeah, they had to. And because he 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 could yeah, he they could. report as a stolen vehicle. What? Wait, wait. You you're at it. Let me get this. Hold up. Hold up now. Let me get this straight. You're at a Love's. You went yes. you went in to use the restroom and you came back out and the truck was gone. Yes. What? Uh, what, what, what the, now let me ask you this. Did the trainee thought that you was in the back in 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 the back of the in the back of the cab? That's why he that's why he took uh, off. I'm gonna, I'm going to get to that part. I'm going to get to that part. You you ain't going to believe this. Uh, so they called a state trooper. The state trooper called some more, more police came to Love's, and they started, you know, questioning me. And they was like, "If we catch him, uh, are you uh, are you gonna fight him?" I'm like, "No, I'm not. I just want to go to sleep, get in the truck. I'm not gonna fight him." And some more cops came. So they like, "Yeah, we saw him on the British patrol. Saw him." Uh, it took us two hours to catch up with him. Where was he? Uh, I don't know how far he he was. And when we caught up to him, it was like, he was like, when we caught up to him and I got in the truck, he was like, I thought you were sitting in the front seat. See, I wear a red hoodie. I wear a hoodies all the time. So at this time, I had a red hoodie on. It was like cold. It was in the wintertime. It was cold in Arizona at this time. Usually, the part we was at Arizona was cold. Yeah, Arizona and got so Arizona got hoodie. two got got two equators. The top part is cold, and yeah. then the bottom part is is warm. Yeah. But I, I, wait, wait, you you caught up with them, so the 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 border patrol or the cops they they got you up there. They they got you. They got you to the truck. They they took you to the truck. Yeah, I rode with a yeah I rode with a police officer. Uh, he was doing like ninety all the way there trying to catch. Uh, and he was like, man, they probably got him at gunpoint right now. Um, they was like, man, this ain't the job for him if he ain't paying attention. You know, wait, wait, he, if he ain't paying attention. He, he thought that you somebody. he he thought that you was in the in the passenger seat while he's driving. Yes. Yeah. How how is that possible? I don't know. That's what he said, man. I like I, you I, know you're not supposed to. It would have been better if he would have said I'm to be in the front seat. It would have been better if he would have said, "Yo, I thought you was in the back of the cab." And, you know, in the back of the yeah. cab sleep. But if you're if but you're not you're not at that stage to team drive. So why what was what was his what was his what was his reason to actually drive in the first place? What what gave him the thought to drive in the first place? It was his it was his uh hour to drive cuz I let my students drive 2 at 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. Oh, okay. Between that. Okay. You know, I let them drive that. And he thought because this gave them opportunity to drive in the daytime and the night. Oh, okay. Okay. So he so he started driving thinking that you're in the passenger seat. Really? Yeah, in the front seat. In the front seat. You you mean to tell me I I can't look over and see that that front that that passenger seat is empty. Like what? It was some covers or some clothes or no, no covers. or anything. No. 
How the hell can he turn around and say? I don't know how you miss a human being. I was like, I must have been invisible. Uh, you, you, must, you, you, must like, been you must have been invisible, man. Invisible. So what? What was? What was the outcome? So I, I know that was a safety situation. So what was the? What, he, uh, what was the outcome? I let him. He was almost. He was almost done with training. He was done two more days with training. So I didn't tell CR England on him or anything. What? Um, wait, da- wait, Daryl. No, wait, 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 bro. Why? Why? That's a whole safety issue, bro. Why you did not? Why you did not? Uh, why you did not let them know, man? That that was. He ended up. He ended up telling them himself when they uh, asked him what happened. Um, see, CR England really don't care. They really didn't care because they asked me. They was like, okay. Okay. Cause I know how CR England. Cause I got a friend that worked in the safety department at CR England, an old school driver. You know, he taught me a lot of stuff when I was uh, doing, uh, when I was doing repo with you no know, recovery vehicles with CR England, and we used to do it together. When we team up, he was an old school driver. You know, a old school driver. You know, he taught me a lot of stuff. So he taught me a lot of stuff about the safety department. SCR okay, so my and, oh, okay, so my 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 thing, I, I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head on on the trainee, bro. I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head on that, man. Why? Oh, it get good. You, you want to hear some more stories man, about him, man? I, what what they 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 brought him on. He stayed. He 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 he, he was driving for him. I, I don't know if he's still a driver for them. He said he want to be a trainer when I told him because um, when I when we first got into it, I told him like, man, you need to you know go work in the circus or be a greeter at Walmart uh, because he was like, this, man, this job is this so ain't for, hard. This ain't for him. And he, yeah, I like this job is so hard. It's so mental drain. I'm like, why did you pick it? I don't know what you thought it was gonna be. He was like, man, y'all got to do so much. Y'all got to do this. You got to watch your mirrors. I'm like, man, your mirrors are your best friend. My trainer told me that, and my trainee, the person who taught me at school, he always said, your mirror is going to be your best friend. You know, you know, my truck, when I was CR England for a year, I, you know, my truck got hit at a TA. You know, my truck got hit at a TA. You know, so it was a, by a sword driver. He won't watch his mirror. He only had 50 hours of driving time. All right. So with this dude who I'm training, he, 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 uh, he, we was going through a truck stop. And for some odd reason, he twists my ver- words around. He, he told me, he said, I told him to speed through truck stop, but slow through intercession. I'm like, no, I said slow down and trust stop because you got plenty of people walking. You know how trust stops is when people just speed through and stuff. So he turned this corner. He most clipped this dude, Peterbilt. I'm like, dude, you got to stop. Stop. I be able to stop mm-hmm. like several times before. He almost hit this person truck toward the, most toward the front end in. I'm like, dude, you can't turn like this. You, in a, you got the trailer on. We not Bob Teller right now. I'm like, you gotta watch your mirrors. Your mirrors is your best friend. I am watching your mirrors and I'm in watching you and you is not moving your head slightly to like, hey, bro, you're not even, you know, you know, you just you know, talking stuff to me. I'm like, you ain't even moving your head to let to let me know, hey, I yeah. Don't, you ain't even moving your head. You not been moving your body. You not moving nothing. You just keep it focused, straight, straight. Darn, you got like, darn hell, man. Act like you're in a horse. Race. Darn, darn hell, man. That see, right, right then and there, that should have been, that should have been your cue, bro. That that should have been your cue, right there. That's when I told, uh, uh, that's when I told CR England right. to, uh, he he needed to leave. He was like, no, work with him. This is what the DM told me. He was like, it's okay. We have accidents all the time. Wait, wait, this is wait the D. This is the DM telling you that. Yes, so the DM. Wait a minute. So the DM's like, okay, well, we have accidents all the time. Ain't no big deal. Are you serious? The DM actually told you to continue working with this inexperienced 
inexperienced now sounding like now sounding like that he don't care type of driver and and the dm still want you to tr- matt no man right there bro you should have put your foot and down no ain't, ain't no try man I'll you should have put your manager. you should have put your foot down i'm talking about that hammer on the shield down like bro get this man out of my truck i i don't feel comfortable with him he's not paying attention he's not listening he, he's he want to leave he he want to leave, wanna leave he wanna get off the truck. you know and they didn't want to get him a bus he didn't want to get they like well he got to find his way home oh okay well th- and they, that's they kept us in california the whole time that's that's not uh, uh okay that that's, that's dirt argument. that's dirty you know what i'm saying i that's that's dirty i i understand but still you 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 should have made it a point with them to be like, look, let me let me get this let me get this man to to a terminal and then you guys can work within within the ways of getting him home or he can work on how to get him home. As of right now, man, your safety is at risk or at least was at risk because you know obviously you're not with them no more and you're you're still here but still uh, your I, your safety your safety was at risk with this cat man you should have you should have went on you should have went on ahead and 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 put your foot down and you should have been like look bro uh dm safety department look get this man off my truck for real I am not going to move this truck until y'all tell me which terminal I am going to to drop this man off. Period. That's that's how it should have went down like that, man. Uh, but you only been with them for a year. Uh, you 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 know, unfortunately, your training experience, by the sounds of it, at least with the one trainer or with the one trainee, wasn't wasn't all that hot, but. I, I guess you like you said he he managed to get his 180 hours in. <laughs> you yeah. you're a good guy, man. You 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 you're a good guy. Me, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have let it got that far. I me personally, I I wouldn't have let it got that far. But you're a good guy. So moving on from uh CR England, you uh you decide to uh leave CR England. Uh, did you left? Did you leave on your own? Because you know what you said in the. I in, got fired. Yeah, you, what you said in the in the in the text message. Uh, uh, what you said that, that was, that was oh that was from Celadon. That's from Celadon. But you yeah, got Celadon. but you got okay. So you got you got fired. What what was the reason that you uh that you got fired from uh CR England? Um, it was a, I was at a dairy. Um, uh, that. The, it was a green light, you know, to take the trailer, you know, but the the yard dog, you know, the, the junk yard dogs, whatever, they told me to, uh, you lock in. So I ended up, I ended up locking, unlocking the trailer. The DOT bumper was bent. It wasn't bent bad. It was just bent, you know, mm-hmm. like you see on most trailers. All the trailers is bent, you know. The DOT bumper is bent. So the safety manager called me. I came. It was it was on Christmas when I got fired. Wow. She called me. She was like, "Well, we're gonna let you go because you've been a DOT bumper." Was it? What, and I was what, like, that, on, "That was that your first? Your well, I guess I guess that's a preventable. Uh, so was that your first preventable with them? To, I yes. mean that. It wasn't. It wasn't nothing else. I mean, he just. I mean, the safety department just caused you. It was like they got me for heartbreaking, heartbreaking events. Uh, that kind of stuff. Heartbreaking events. All right. So was you able? Um, was you? Was you? Was you able to? Um, was you able to? Um, was, you able to um, was you able to actually see that in writing? Uh, when they let it, when they let it, you go. Well, the the reason they let it, you go. Was you able to see that in writing? No, she would never gave me the paper. Okay, so they just called you up, told she, you to bring the, told routed you in, and and no, I was working local at the time. I was working local at the time. Okay, so they so they they called you up, told you to bring the uh bring the truck back to the. 
to to the local place where you picked it up from and just it and was just already there. Oh uh-huh. wait. So what they they did this they they Friday'd you? <laughs> they they did this, they called you up yeah. while you was at home? Yeah, when I was at home, it was Christmas and I was it was kinda weird. So you know, your job called you on Christmas. No, I take that back. It was the day after Christmas. Okay. He called me. Because I worked Christmas Day. It was a day after Christmas. And, you know, it was like, if I were to make it to, you know, January, I would have got my $1,000 bonus with them. You know, my yearly bonus, I would get my, I think, $1,000 bonus at the time. And I got fired before they even gave it to me. Wow. And, you know, it was a hard event. I had like five hard events, uh, heartbreaking events, you know, you know, when you're in traffic, I don't think I was someone to brace that hard, you know, I don't, she was like, when the speed, I don't know what considers a heartbreaking event, because I never hit the brace hard, I don't, I don't know what they seen, you know, uh, she followed me one day, she said I ran a red light, which I did, my truck was already in the session, when, you know, when you turn well, my truck was already in the in the session at the time, she said, I, you know, she, I look at the video. When I look at the video, she's like five cars behind. I'm like, my truck is already over the line. I'm already in the intersection. I own the intersection. So me and her always would bump head. Me and the station there always would bump head. Because I like, you don't got your CDS. She was like, I've been to courses. I like you don't know how to drive a truck. It don't care if you've been to course. If you never drive a truck, you don't know how to sell a field. You know, that's just like me taking a pilot, telling pilots how to fly. If I never fly a plane, I don't understand nothing about it, you know. So she she let me go. Okay, so she so five breaking events, uh, the DLT bumper, the DLT bumper issue. When, when you stepped out from CR England uh, after being there for almost a year, uh you of course you you put your name back out there to to get back into you know get back into the truck uh did you know at the time that they put that put that on your your DAC report which which probably no, I didn't which, understand DAC report what, at the time which probably could have really which probably could have hindered you which which you did mention in yeah. in, in the in in the in your comment which did kind of hinder you and getting another, uh, you know, another job. But after you left CR England, how long was it? And what was the company that did give you another opportunity? Um, I went to CR, I went to Celadon, Celadon. at the time. Okay. Yeah, I went to Celadon, then I, then I got into, then I left Celadon, then I went to, uh, I went to, uh, you know, JP. I went to JP McMahon to drive gas trucks, to drive diesel, uh, shred mix, and ethanol. Uh, it was a small company, you know. It was a small company. Everybody know everybody. So, All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, you skip, day, you, you skip right over Celadon, bro. <laughs> no, I went. Oh no, I love, I love JP. Went back to Celadon. Oh, you went back. Oh, you left and, and went back to Celadon. Okay, so Celadon. Yeah, I went back to. So Celadon, Celadon was the one that, was the one that gave you that that gave you the opportunity, despite what was on your on your DAC report. Did you did you find yeah, out yeah. did you find out through Celadon what was on your DAC report? Yeah, Celadon. They um, they they talked to you. The safety manager talked to you at Celadon. Uh, when I went back to Celadon, they you know that stuff. Say we you feel like mine was like a year or whatever, and he was he was cool. He told me he told me a lot of secrets that you know they don't tell a lot of drivers. And when they let me go, he was like, "Don't go to a company that got shareholders." Because they the he is like it's not really about insurance. He is like a lot of drivers think it's is really about insurance. It's really about shareholders. Okay, like, so hold on, right quick. You is a private owned. Company. Hold on, right quick. Hold on, because you didn't mention that. You didn't mention that. But what was? The, but Celadon, you did mention that Celadon fired you. Fired you from Celadon because you got the, because you got, 
I got stuck, stuck in the, the mud, mud and you got um, told out. I went through the, yeah, I went to the wrong shipper. I went to the wrong shipper. Uh-huh. So when I was coming out, it was like a little side street where they had this, where they had me going. It was to a food bank. And then I was supposed to go next door. Mm-hmm. And when I was coming out, I was about to hit the mailbox. So I went back, pulled in my, my dry tires. The mm-hmm. the last dry tire got stuck in the mud. Mm-hmm. I couldn't move, and how the road was is was like a, it was like a a, a circle. So it was it was going up and down. How it was low, cause one the middle of the road was up, and the side of the road was like real low. Okay. So you know the the landing gear and all that didn't help. I tried. I was in a Volvo, and I was in an automatic, and. So I had to call it. I had to call, you know, them to say they sent a a, a wrecker out, uh, a tow truck out. They pulled me out. I didn't damage the truck. I went to the finishing low. I worked that whole week. That whole week, I worked that whole week. If this happened on a Monday. I worked that whole week. Then next Monday they called me in, and then they told me I'm like y'all gotta talk this over the phone. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, sorry, we gotta let you go. And you know, sorry, we gotta let you go. He was like, go to a company that do not have shareholders. He was like, you can get a job. He was like, you can get a job. He was like, don't worry about it. You can get you get a bounce back quick. He was like, don't go to a company that got shareholders. Why you now? Know? Why why did he go mention a, now? Why did he mention about shareholders? I mean, what what do the shareholders got yeah. got to do with uh with 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 a truck driver getting getting a job? that has issues on his DAC report? Because they, they don't, when they go to the board, when a sexy man go to the board, they, they, they got people, they got people that represent the, the shareholders and they on the board too. So you got people that do not know nothing about the industry. So they vote on drivers who get fired every day, Monday through Friday, when it was still down was open at the time. He was like, Monday through Friday, they got shareholders, they they vote on drivers who should get fired, who can stay. Um so, you know, they said that he said they voted me out. He he said he was trying to tell them this is what happened. The truck won't damage, the trailer won't damage, none of them won't damage. They said, Well, it was a safety hazard because he went off the road, you know, you know, they consider off the road, the whole tractor was off the road, which it wasn't. I took pictures of it, everything at the time. So technically, and so they, so uh, technically, you 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 got terminated for another another safety issue. So was this? So yeah, it was a safety. So issue. you got so this is this the second time. So the first time we'll see our England within that. So both of these was in the same year that that uh that you was no, let go. No, both of them were in the same year. No. One was uh, 2017. The other one was uh, last year. Last year was. It was um, 2019 when I got. So it was no, two years. So it was two years. So it was two years apart. Yes. Okay. So on the DAT report, yeah, or with some companies, you know, they 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 look at, you know, they they only look at, they they just say that you have to have. Um, you can't have a preventable within, you know, a two year period or something like that. Now I'm not yeah, sure. Like yeah, now I'm not sure if 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 that's normally that stuff drops off on your DAC report as well. But um, yeah. But with Celadon, because you know Celadon, they they just recently closed down. I'm 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 yeah, having a hard yeah. they, they. I'm having a hard time. I'm. I guess I guess you could say I'm having a hard time feeling with what that guy said about about the shareholders having something to do. It worked because it worked because I started looking at companies that were shareholders. Now let's start looking at companies that wasn't shareholders, like small companies, and they would take me in a heartbeat. Well, yeah, small like, companies. They could have read my life yeah, sm- they- small companies would do that. They you you got some companies that that don't even that don't even look at a DAT report. Now, unfortunate is... Yeah, I went to U.S. Express, and he was like, no, we can't take you. Right, <laughs> right. They, you know, big, 
you know, I talked about I, I talked about that in my one of my live streams. That big major uh major uh major carriers, they they're gonna always look at the debt report, no matter what. Swift and they Swift the most Yeah, too, Swift, you know. US Express, Snyder, all of them is gonna look at the debt report. You know, you got mid size, mid to small companies can overlook your DAC report and they could still yeah, they could still bring you company, in. This, but the the, the shit Yeah, this one company didn't even see my stuff. Like they didn't even see nothing on there. I, I told them this is what it is. And the dude gave me a copy of my DAC report and he uh I showed him and they was like, Well we don't see it. But like I, this was at PWD. But like I said, some companies would let you. Some companies would let you. You know, let you come on. You know, there some companies would give you. You know, give you a chance. A lot of, I, I hate to say this, but a lot of companies in the Chicagoland area, Illinois area, there, 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 there. There's a few of them. There's a few of them out here that will overlook your your DAC report. You know what I'm saying? But you should always always keep up with your DAC report. You should always, you know, yeah, you know, pull it, now. you know, pull it once a year, maybe once a year or about a month after you quit a company, you know, pull, pull it out. Just, just, just to see what that company says about you, because if it's something derogatory or inflammatory, you can, you can dispute it and uh get it off there yeah but uh you said shareholders that's that's what pretty much got me to reach out to you because like i said you know i yeah. this is the he, first time he i heard something about that because it's it's basically up to the insurance that if they want to you know if they want to insure you or not to to drive for that uh for that particular company all right man so yeah. All right, so you're a tanker driver now. So you have your you got you got your hazmat and your 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 tankers. Uh how long how long you been rocking yeah. out with uh how long you been rocking out with uh tanker driving and what's the experience with that? Um, I started after uh Saladon. Mm -hmm. Um I went JP and stuff and uh right now it's you know slow for us because nobody ain't driving, so you know, ain't really that much work. It's only twenty percent of work. That's what they told. Me. So is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it you say like, you you say you haul diesel or what was it? Diesel fuel you know, or regular fuel? Because I would assume uh, diesel fuel. Like you drop at the uh, is diesel fuel where you drop at the uh, at pilot right or another commercial truck. Um, I like. I like tanker because, you know, you fill up your load, you unload your load, you don't really got to wait for it. You don't got to wait to be put at the dock. You don't got to wait for somebody to unload you. You know, you don't got to wait. The uh, only time I had to wait for hours is like a long line. You know, the most I ever had to wait was two hours. You know, you know, so by the time you load up, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to load up. You know, it don't take that long to load up. You know, it takes about thirty minutes to unload at a site, then you just go on. But I like I like tanker. I like the tanker life, you know. Okay, okay. Tanker life. Uh how long how long you been uh how long you been driving how long you been driving uh tankers? Uh, how long has it been now? Uh a year. Oh, you've been on it a year. Oh, okay. Is so what's the what's the pay structure like? It, you you get paid by you get paid percentage you get paid CPM. I get paid by the load. Or you get paid by the load. So what is it by the load or the percentage? Um, it's forty percent of the oh, load. So you get percentage. Um, okay. It's like yeah, it's like forty percent of the load. It's like the closer to the terminal, the less you'll make. The farther from the terminal, it's like say. Indianapolis to Bloomington. Bloomington is that where I make the most money. Or if I haul Elsno, Elsno is like one fifty dollar that low. So I might have like three Elsnoles to do, and it take all day to do Elsno. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do Elsno all the time, especially in a thunderstorm, because they shut down everything when you do Elsno. You can't unload or unload. Uh, you can't load up, uh, do Elsno. You gotta wait for another hour. Mm -hmm. 
But if you do gas, you can load up and you know, and turn a storm and gas. So do you get do you, um, do you get paid? Uh, so you so the whole so the whole percentage covers everything you do. I mean, you don't get paid extra like loading, unloading, um, no. um, waiting because I'm assuming you have to drive the tanker up under the up under the holes or or connect the holes and all like that. That takes a, yes. that takes additional work that I think that you have yeah, to do. You, you, get you don't get our, you get paid. Uh, yeah, you get fifteen dollars just to wait. If it's more than an hour, it's fifteen dollars an hour. Okay. Um, but that's only it. But you know, when my truck was down, you know, I believe it was Thanksgiving. My truck was down. Um, you, uh, I didn't get paid that whole week. You know, I didn't get paid that whole you, week. You I'm didn't wait, wait, wait. You didn't wait. Anyhow. You you didn't get paid no layover pay or nothing like that. No breakdown pay. No. Do they, they offer that? No, they don't do breakdown pay. They they don't offer breakdown nope. pay. No. Nope. So for that entire week that your truck was in the shop, you didn't get paid. Cause he said I still could have rolled. The driving manager, the DM said I still could have rolled with the truck. I had a regular leak, whatever, and I got a tire put right there in there every day. Okay. And I'm like, this got to be fixed. But it, yeah, it got to be fixed. I'm like, this got to that, be that's, fixed. That's a, that's a DLT and issue. You can, see the, you can see the leak. That's uh, a DLT issue if you have a, a radiator leak. Yeah. Yeah. So you had, yeah, you had to get it I fixed. So like, how, how, how could you, how, how could you like, run, how, how, how could you run with a bad radiator? I told him I wasn't going to do it. So him, they wasn't I'm like I'm not finna run with it. So they didn't. So they didn't give you. They they didn't give you a temporary truck. Was this was this like a sleeper truck or or day cab? It's a day so cab. So they couldn't give you. They they couldn't they couldn't slip seed you into another day cab while your truck was in the shop. No, oh, because I'm the only. Because they stationed in Chicago. Oh, you know, Luke Oil gas station. Okay. They uh, you know, they out there so. I'm the first driver of Indianapolis, so they just got some contract in Indianapolis. Okay. Indianapolis is only one truck. And they was like, well, we're going to rent a truck. I'm like, okay, this is around Thanksgiving, so nobody won't open on Thanksgiving. Okay, so the the, the, the day and, after Thanksgiving, uh, give you, you know, give you, they, go go up to Penske, grab a, grab a day cab, drive yeah. that until your truck gets fixed. What's? No, they didn't do that. They said they was going to, but they never did. They was like, then uh, Saturday morning came. Uh, they was like, the truck is done, so I wanted to go pick up the truck. Okay. Now this is then, this is the company that you that that you currently with, right? Yes. Okay. So this, do you want to do you want to say what the company name is or no? You you don't have to. It's Luke. Luke. It's Luke. Luke. Yeah, Luke Oil Trans. Luke Oil Transfer Transportation. It's like the Luke Oil friend brand. They got a truck company. You know the gas company. I don't know if you ever been to East Chicago or a Gary. You know up there. Yeah, or, yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with them. But, uh, but wait a minute, though. Um, hold up. <laughs> This this yeah, is a this this, this is a lot. They just fired them. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Because this. This is a I'm a, I'm assuming it's a large company. Uh it's a large company. I mean Luke Luke Oil is is a large, you know, it's a large entity. And they actually got they yeah. actually got people in there. Uh they got they got uh, they got people in there that's that's actually treating drivers like like how they treated you. It's only two yeah, there's only two. He lay off a lot of people. That's why they fired him. Oh, okay. The CEO ended up firing him. They was like, uh, the dude who hired me, he got fired because he lay off a lot of people. You know, they want no work, and I guess they didn't want to pay nobody. You know, when we not when we don't have no loads that day or that week, we're supposed to still get paid regardless. That's why we stay with the company. But me and the dude who they got, who who uh, who my manager now, we is not seeing eye to eye. 
See, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I, the sometimes the success of any company always boils down between the driver and the driver manager or the fleet manager. You know, in my in my humble opinion, I mean, if you can't get along with with yeah. your driver manager, the 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 tenure at the company is not going to be all that hot. You know what I'm saying? So if you not not to say you know not to say that you know I mean I, I'm assuming you still you still with this company obviously you like them because you still with them but yeah. I'm I, you know I'm just saying you know for what they for for what that that manager did to you you know let you go a whole week without without even you know getting you into another truck and 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 trying to force you to continue driving with 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 the truck being in this in the condition that it's in, that's not cool, man. That that's that's not cool at all. But nah. um uh but um but the current company that you would you uh like I said you you obviously uh still enjoy uh rocking out with them but now with this uh with this I'm trying to roll with them but it, it, uh it, you know it's, it's time it's, uh, it's, it, it might be time to uh <laughs> It might be time to start to yeah. start opening up the books again, huh? Yeah, I've been looking. You know, I don't like switching companies. You know, it's just a lot of paperwork at the beginning. You know, that's just stressful. But you know, I you know I want to stay with a company for years and years. So I really want to be a you know a small fleet owner. That's why I got into the trucking game to start my own trucking business. You know, I got my own podcast. You know, I you know I do want to shoot music videos to buy equipment. That's why I got in the trucking thing because I knew I was going to make good money eventually. Because when I was with JP, but man, the most of the money I made as a company driver, mm-hmm. and I can show you proof of this, was three thousand dollars in one okay. week. Okay. Okay. And I was only doing two loads at the day, you know, and that was with JP. JP paid good. JP, but man, they they uh, stationed in Illinois too. You know, you know. So after his divorce, he just got mad at all the drivers. He put drivers on blast and emails. I'm like, he was showing people screenshot of drivers arguing with him through the company email. We was like, man, this is very unprofessional. The dude who introduced me to hauling tanker and hauling gas, cause I used to be scared to haul gas. I'm like, man, I would never haul gas. I'm like, man, I'm so scared of it because, you know, you drive that tanker, you know, you might blow up. I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, dude hauled Jeff, you in Indianapolis, he, he ended up dying. You know, he ended up spinning around the ramps. You know, that's one thing when you drive tankers, you don't want to speed. When you haul hazmat, you don't want to speed. Any truck, really, you don't want to speed around ramps. Mm-hmm. You know, and I see a lot of tankers speed around ramps. They go past me. And they look at me like I'm in a way, like I'm in a slow lane. I'm like, dude, you going too fast around this ramp, you know? And it's just like, it's sad when you see other drivers just driving reckless. You know, I understand, you know, we get paid by the low. Mm-hmm. But if you can't make it to that low, you're not going to get paid regardless. You know, it, it might cost you your life. So you got you, you, know, you got to stay safe. Was, you got to stay safe, and you gotta you gotta stay safe, and you gotta definitely uh, watch what you watch what you're doing, especially uh, especially driving tankers, man. That's uh, that's that's definitely what's yeah, up. It, so this uh, this COVID nineteen uh, thing really hit y'all. Really hit really hit you guys hard. Yes, I thought we were going to be the last one to get hit. I really did because we haul a few. I'm like, man, because other drivers are like, man, we ain't going to get hit that mm-hmm. hard. But, man, we got hit hard. You know, other companies lay off all their drivers. Uh, JP, my man in Indianapolis base, they lay off all their drivers right now. Mm-hmm. And they 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 only got one contract with one company at a Seaway gas station. So Marathon is like, well, we already got our guys. And they cut down on they on their days too, cause they you know they work a four day week, mm-hmm. you know now they down for three days and you know with us you know we they hit us like twenty percent, you know it's just people not driving, you know I thought we'd be busy cause trucks still be rolling it was like the truck companies I go to I used to do like, you know who I say 
gas to these big truck companies, they they only order one load a day. You know, they not ordering three, four loads a day no more. So it really hit us hard. It really is a good is a is a good hit to us and like like I was thinking like, man, I don't got no money saved. I'm like it was a wake-up call for me, you know. It was a wake-up call for me. Like, I don't have no money saved. I don't have no mercy fund put up. i like, man, I got to start saving, you know. So I started putting money in my saving account since I've been getting paid. Since this stuff started, I've been getting put money in my saving account, like 10 to 20 percent uh, saving in my saving account. Because my goal is to save $10,000. So that would last me for, like, you know, 11, 6 months. And my rent is paid. So like I rent out two rooms, so for my house, so my rent is paid. So it's like, then I do like grub have all that, you know. So and so it, this twenty nine, this COVID nineteen really hit us hard. Really hit the gas industry. I like, man, gas is cheap too, you know. So that that hurt us too. Where when gas is cheap, you know, people now put more money into the gas thing. You know, it took twenty dollars to fill up my van versus take fifty dollars to fill up my van. All right. So, yeah. So it, 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 cheap gas and people not going on nowhere. It really hit us. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, man, that's um, that's that's uh hard to hear. So right now, I I guess you at home chilling and and waiting to waiting for that car to get back in. Uh, hopefully you're, you know, like I said, you got the books back open. Um, hopefully yeah, you got the books back open to, to, um, to, uh, you know, to get back on the road, man. And, uh, and, and get back at that bag. All right, Darnell, man. Yeah. Hey man, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it, man. You, oh, no uh, anytime, you, uh, anytime, you definitely, man. uh, shed some light on, uh, on a few things with, uh, CR England and, uh, uh, and, you know, and the current company that you, that you with now and, 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 you know, you went in deep with, uh, with, uh, with the shareholders thing, because like I said, that, that was the main thing that I was, uh, kind of interested in because I wasn't sure that you know shareholders had anything to do yeah. with with drivers. Me so, either, man. but uh, yo man, I I do appreciate you coming on. Uh, if you guys want to come on and holler at your boy, you know what to do. You get at me in the lockout men podcast at gmail dot com, or you can call me up. Or not call. Don't call me. My fault. Text me two one six six zero zero two zero nine zero. Or you can come over to Instagram and hit me up in the DM over there, man. Again, thanks, uh, thanks to my man um, uh, Darnell Bonds. Yo, man, where 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 do people yeah, uh, no problem, where man. where do people can find you at, man? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, D Bonds three one seven. I'm a host of my own podcast, the D Bonds Show. Okay. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Darnell Bonds. So I'll be at Facebook as well because I, you know, Facebook don't like you sharing a couple of things. It's not even nothing special. It's just you'd be surprised what I get on Facebook jail for. But you can follow me on Instagram, D Bonds three one seven. Hit me on there or YouTube, uh, the D Bonds Show on YouTube. Um, but that's where you can find me, man. Right. Anytime you need me to come on, man, I'm always on. All right, man. We're going we gonna to do that. You know, we're going to do that. We, we'll hook up again, man. I appreciate you coming on, and I appreciate you guys watching and listening. And on that note, me and, me and D, we are gone. One.